He's the number one pick for a reason. You know who said that? The number two pick in last year's draft, CJ Stroud. Bryce threw for 58 touchdowns in a single high school football season, about 30 minutes north of where I'm recording this. He won Gatorade National Player of the Year. Then he went to Bama, backed up Mac Jones for his historic season, won the Heisman his second year, and after his third year became the number one pick in the draft. Now, you knew all or some of what I just said if you even clicked on this video, but I'm constantly reminded that after all the quarterbacks, elite guys that I've had an opportunity to be around, that Bryce is still, even though this was a tough year, in a very, very small, supremely talented group. Until last season, Bryce's journey kind of looked like this. I mean, I met him as a middle school kid and he was a hyped middle school kid coming out and throwing. So that just continued to get better and better as he went from one high school to modern day, then went to Bama and the whole story all the way up until this last season. This last season was really the first real dip in his trajectory of his career thus far. So we're here to figure out how is he gonna respond, what does he do well, and what's he gonna do with an owner who's in a win now mode, a new head coach, new pieces around him, and a ton of pressure. All right, so let's go into the tape and check it out. Right here, we got first and 10, they're down 6-3 second quarter. Now this is the second start, this is week two, taking on the New Orleans Saints, who as we saw this season had a really good defense. And he's gonna do something here that Honestly, I I remember playing for the Bengals and Bob Rakowski was offensive coordinator. He w we wouldn't naked to the left as right-handed quarterbacks because he didn't want to put quarterbacks in a precarious situation like that. And here's the rookie week two doing it. Didn't spend a ton of time under center in his career before this, but he's in a naked rolling left. And here's the concept: we're gonna get out of a tight split, which looks like a great run formation. We're gonna get Adam Thielen going deep. We're gonna get DJ Chark coming across. There's always gonna be a flat element on this as well. But here, I don't know if somebody's going the wrong way or not. There's not a flat element, which means he either has to throw it down the field to Thielen who's covered or hit Chark or run it. And even the slam flat late by this tight end right here is not a great outlet if that's not there. So this is a tough situation to put this young guy in there's a lot of bad things that can, that can happen here, right? It's not like he's going to juke three dudes right here and rip off a big run. He's got people in his face and would have to make a play out there, but he doesn't. He flips his hips around, look at it from this angle. Okay, reverse pivots out, gets extension. Look at the effect that it has right here. Number one, crossing over, allows for Thielen to get that release by him. And as he flips his hips, he does not really have any options here. It's not like you can throw it to 80. Look at this guy. It looks like he got like snipered in the ankle right here. I'm not sure what happened. But Bryce flips his hips, not even getting his feet set, and puts a seed on Shark for a big first down conversion. And early in a game, that kind of messes with the defense when all of a sudden you're moving laterally and nakeding and getting the defense to second guess themselves, gets them out of their stance a little bit slower. All right, this is week eight versus CJ Stroud and the Houston Texans. They're down seven, and this is something that we've seen Bryce Young do a ton, which is make something happen. So here's the concept. We're gonna switch release down here, okay? Thielen's gonna come. Um, on the pylon route, I, I, there's a lot of different names for it. Okay. This guy's gonna widen, nod, and get vertical out of it. So if this safety cuts this at all, and he comes into his vision and cuts this, we're going way up top with it. And then we're gonna have a flat element here up top. Play action, okay. He's got Chuba Hubbard trying to block this guy, but that guy puts his face right in Chuba's and walks him back into Bryce. Bryce makes a play, gets out of it, uh, Adam Thielen throws his hand up, and this is another one rolling left, throwing across your body. Great play by the young fella. Play action, he knows he's in trouble right here. That's that bull rush. Okay. Protects the football, rolls left. He does not get four or five steps to be able to get into this. He really, in one, two, his third foot hits the ground. This thing's coming out. Um, I work with a lot of guys on getting to off-platform, okay? So when, let's just talk about off-platform, throwing on the run, okay? Two things have to happen that Bryce does here, right? One, we got to get stability in our plant leg. So this right foot right here, we have to be able to create stability to allow mobility somewhere else. And the way that I would tell if he's doing that is by the extension when that ball releases, so elbow extension, look at that line. So that left leg, that right arm, 
that's that line of tension. When I'm throwing on platform, it's from my left hip to my wrist. When I'm throwing off platform, it's from your left foot to your left wrist, which is really the only way that you can do something this difficult. Roll to your left and put a ball in a catchable position. I know this isn't like perfectly thrown. This is a hard throw to make. And it's a great adjustment by Thielen. That's why you go get a veteran guy who knows it and can go up and get it. Again, we've seen him throw on time, accurate, boom, get the ball out, super quick release, high IQ when it comes to football and understanding what's happening and where to go with the ball, but don't sleep on his ability to just straight up make plays too. Now this is down eight in the fourth quarter, taking on another young great player in Jordan Love. I don't love this concept. I'm not 100% sure what they're doing down here. Hey, we've got, I don't know what this is. We've got a seam, we've got a post, we've got an out route into a hitch. I don't know who's wrong. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, don't love it. A hey, little RPO element, but the timing's all off. Let, just look right here. Again, this affects the play. Thielen not getting off the ball affects the quick out by the tight end. So it looks like it might be an RPO. It's not, this is a play action. And again, I'm just not really sure what they're doing here. I mean, no one's really open on time. By the time he wants to throw it to 80, he's stopping, coming out of it. Even the DB right here is like, dude, wait, what are you guys doing? Okay, so this is just jacked up from the start, but avoids, gets out of the pocket, and then look at this ball placement. Only place, if that's undercut, that's a pick. It's not undercut, it's a dime. DJ Chark making something happen. Hey, he wants to go left, and it looks terrible to him. There's nowhere to go, extends the play. He knows he's got his guy, and he knows that it has to be thrown out in front of him. Can't be thrown too far out in front of him because he won't get a second foot down. That is essentially a perfect throw, high degree of difficulty. Again, terrible picture once he gets the ball in his hands, make something happen. I'm Jordan Palmer. I want to tell you about my new newsletter called Cover 3. I have a lot of interesting discussions about football throughout all 12 months of the year, and I uniquely see the position differently because I do camps for middle school and high school. I train some of the top college quarterbacks. I train some of the top NFL quarterbacks. A lot of my friends are coordinators and head coaches, but I've also got some buddies in the media world and the agent world. So I just kind of see the entire thing, which is why I created Cover 3, picking the three most relevant topics each week throughout the entire year and breaking them down for you. I'm not going to explain to you that I think Patrick Mahomes is good at quarterback. You can find that content anywhere, but I might highlight something you had no idea what was going on or you heard about, but didn't have any context for why that happened. And I'm able to bring that digestively every single week, Cover 3, sign up and check it out. This was a really tough start to his NFL career, and I get it. I've heard Dan Orlovsky say this, and I agree. We should not judge Bryce Young as an NFL quarterback until his third year, meaning this whatever happened this year is just not his fault. It was a dumpster fire that he went into, and I think you could put a lot of quarterbacks in that same situation, and I don't think the play would have been better. But just looking at it, we know they were 2-15. and 15. He was right under 60% completion percentage, 2,800-plus yards, another 250 on the ground. But here's the key ones. He had 11 touchdowns, 10 picks, and 11 fumbles. So that's 21 turnovers against 11 touchdowns. Obviously, that needs to change. But I just, I watched a lot of his tape. I, there's not people open. There's not guys winning. There's protection issues. I, that's just what's going to happen. Let me give you some context. We just saw Trevor Lawrence last season have a great second season and then this year followed up with another really really strong year trevor's rookie year the urban meyer dumpster fire that that was he was the same completion percentage more yards 12 touchdowns 17 picks how about jared goff as the former number one pick 54 percent completion percentage five touchdowns seven picks in seven games. So he was on pace for a lot more picks. Even Burrow was 13 to five in his 10 games that he played as a rookie, even though he had less yards, but he had 65% completion percentage. And Kyler Murray, 20 touchdowns, 12 picks in the 16 games that he played as a rookie. And that's, again, that's just context for some former number one overall picks. And I think Trevor is the most notable one because I spent a lot of time with Trevor. When all that was happening his rookie year, the one thing I was confident in is that as soon as that season ended, it was not gonna get carried into his second year. He's too much of a winner. He's too confident 
confident that one bad year, it's not going to affect him long term. I'm going to say the same exact thing about Bryce Young. Both those guys, middle school, high school, college, it kind of went as well as it could have. And then they have a dumpster fire rookie year. I just, with some guys, you worry about them. Hey, is he going to be the same? Is this going to rattle him? Is this going to affect the confidence? And that's warranted. With Trevor, it didn't. And with Bryce, I'm saying it is not going to. He's not going to carry the bad from year one into year two. I just know how he works. I know how he approaches this. And I know what the talent level is. Again, contributing to that. Fourth most sacks in the NFL. Let's look at the O-line. Second most hurries. Fourth most pressures fourth worst by efficiency. And Bryce is an athletic quarterback. That means Bryce has probably avoided a lot of those. On those three plays I showed you, there's two sacks that we should have had. His playmakers, Miles Sanders signed a four-year contract. Chuba Hubbard was PFF's highest graded receiver on the team. Think about that. Did you know who Chuba Hubbard was before this video? Hey, Adam Thielen is 33 years old. DJ Chark, one of the worst graded receivers for drops in the entire NFL, according to PFF. New head coach is David Canales. He was offensive coordinator in Tampa last year. Baker had a resurgence. Baker had set career highs last year in Tampa with this coach. Passing yards, completion percentage, touchdowns, total completions, one of two NFL QBs to throw at least 27 touchdowns with 10 or fewer picks. So again, there's the former number one overall pick, Baker, having a career year with Canales at the helm. Now Canales is going to, he's already said in his press conference, take Bryce under his wing and they're going to build something special. And Bryce, how bad was this year and how big is this turnaround going to be? He was the 61st best QB passing grade according to PFF. We know how last year went. It was a struggle and I'm sitting here going, I can do another video if you want on all a bunch of other amazing plays that Bryce made, or I can do a video on all the plays where Bryce had no chance. Protection, receivers, whatever it is. Again, I don't think he's carrying any of this over into next season. And I think Canales, Bryce, and whatever they do this offseason to beef up a roster that needs some help, I think Bryce is, even though the trajectory was like this and dropped off, I think it's going to start heading up and to the right again. Big fan of Bryce as a person, big fan of Bryce as a player, fired up to see him get up off the mat and get ready for round two.